very long, productive life, surrounded by the people that love her most. While Avery Williams will never remember her parents' desperate struggle to save her life, Lynn Sanders will never forget her own decade-long crusade to convince anyone that she was suffering at all. In the spring of 1974, 15-year-old Lynn Sanders had a reputation as one of the best swimmers in the small Wisconsin town she grew up in. I medaled in the Parkland Conference when you swim against all other high schools, and I took third place in breaststroke, which I was really proud of. But one afternoon, as she's gliding through the water, Lynn starts to feel something she's never felt before, agonizing pain in her hands. It was really uncomfortable, achy, like I had the flu or something. Lynn describes the strange soreness to her mother, who insists on taking her in to see the family doctor. He immediately assumes that the teen has broken a small bone in her hand from the strenuous water workouts. But after taking an x-ray, nothing appears out of the ordinary. The doctor chalks her aches up to growing pains and encourages Lynn to keep her hand wrapped in a support bandage whenever the pain flares up. Kids are always asking you, why are you wearing that? So you have to explain a story that I just sprained myself. I didn't want to let them know that the doctor just said it was growing pains. Worse still, as the weeks drag on, the pain in her wrists does not get any better. In fact, they eventually become so tender that she can no longer keep up with the grueling swimming workouts. Basically, the pain forced me to quit. It was very difficult to uh, quit the swim team, and my parents were disappointed. Despite the strange look she keeps getting from classmates, Lynn does her best to just live her life like a normal teenager. She starts going to the local roller rink after school, hoping to make new friends. It was boys' choice, and I asked her to, to skate, and uh, we ended up uh, going on another date from that. During the dating years, I would mention every once in a while that my hand or shoulders were hurting, but I didn't really want to keep mentioning to Dave about all my pain because I didn't want to chase him away. By the time her senior year rolls around, Lynn is living with chronic pain 24-7. While Dave is essentially unaware of what she's going through, he does notice that Lynn has a propensity to hurt herself. He would call me klutzy. He would see me do klutzy things. But nobody realizes just how bad her situation has become. In fact, Lynn's hands have gotten so sore, she's starting to have trouble performing even the simplest of tasks. I really did feel alone. My mom would tell me to just wrap it up with a bandage and, you know, it'll be better in a couple weeks. Weeks, then months go by. And the relentless pain doesn't let up, despite the fact that she's wearing the hand braces and taking aspirin four times a day. Then, right before graduation, Lynn notices something very unnatural while she's going through her morning stretches. My elbows look different. They rotated weird. I was not aware that Lynn had hypermobility of her joints. It wasn't something that she shared with me or really anyone. But soon after the young couple gets married in 1978, Lynn can't hide her condition from Dave any longer. I worked at a daycare. I had a hard time lifting the two-year-olds. I could feel my shoulder starting to pop out, and I, I could literally hear it pop. And it would actually, what they call wing out, it would almost separate from the, where it's supposed to lie and lie flat. I would get horrendous pain. When she can't take it any longer, Lynn quits the daycare and takes on a more low-key desk job. But the daily repetitive office tasks soon begin to take a toll on her as well. It was getting harder for me to button my buttons on my blouse, turn doorknobs, lift up things with my, my hand. Finally, Dave insists that she see an orthopedist to find out once and for all what's wrong with her. Basically, he comes in the x-ray room and he pulls my hand and separates my wrist during the x-ray. And no other doctor ever did that. Next, he gives her an extremely thorough exam and even has her perform a series of manual exercises to see how her bones react to movement. 
When he was doing the stress test, it was really a horrendous pain. My hand bone basically separated a lot from my wrist bone. The doctor explains that Lynn's fragile ligaments are so stretched out, they're literally unable to keep her bones in place anymore. This allows the dozens of bones in her hands to rub up against each other, causing friction and excruciating pain. My ligaments were stretching out, and he needed to shorten those ligaments up. He decided that he could do a surgery. Desperate to make the pain go away, Lynn agrees to the surgery. And two months later, she feels something in her hands that she hasn't felt since she was 15. Nothing. The wrist felt so much better, and it made me feel 10 times better knowing that this doctor actually, I believe, got down to the bottom of the problem. Over the next four years, Lynn undergoes seven surgeries on various joints. It's the only way she's able to keep the pain at bay. Again and again, it was one joint and another. One would get patched up and fixed up, and then six months later, it'd be a different joint that uh, we had problems with. Then in 1981, Lynn finds out she's pregnant. At first, she and Dave are overjoyed. But it isn't long before the throbbing pains return with a vengeance. And this time, they're not just in her hands. In fact, her entire body feels as if it's been battered. The OBGYN said that you are stretching out and that you were going to have a little achiness from being pregnant. All my joint pain never subsided during the whole pregnancy. I didn't know what to expect. Basically, I, I, I was scared. Got a package full of wishes, a time machine, a magic wand, a globe made out of gold. This holiday, see how far a wish can go. Button up the savings on the warmest wishes with an amazing 50 to 60% off sweaters and coats for the family. The 48-hour sale starts Wednesday. Don't just give a gift, grant a wish. Sears. I started drinking silk because I wanted to get healthier. I poured a glass of the silk. I had just poured the container, and I drank it, and it tasted really good. So I go to John. John, come here for a minute. Come and try this. So he comes over, and he takes the glass, and he drinks it, and he goes like, wow, that is good. It's really good. It's creamy. It's tasty. I said, I know. It tastes great. He got thumbs up from Rose. If that means anything to anybody. <laughs> silk has soy protein, antioxidants, and omega-3s, plus all the calcium and vitamins A and D of milk. Silk. Take a step forward. Lying here dreaming, nothing much has changed with season except time just waiting. Because a bathroom can be more than just a bathroom. Clorox helps keep it clean. Even the imaginary parts. And try Clorox Toilet Wand. It disinfects and cleans better than ever before. And keep it all together in our designer caddy. Clorox Toilet Wand System. Want to know the best way to get your stains out in the wash? Well, America's leading washer brands, Maytag and Whirlpool, recommend OxyClean. And now have a dispenser for OxyClean, because they know it's better at getting out the spills, the spots and the splatters, whether they're ground in, smeared on, or dried up, it doesn't matter. OxyClean lifts away stains detergents can leave behind. Cleaner, brighter, and whiter. That's the power of OxyClean. Now unleash two cleaning powers in one detergent. Try new Arm & Hammer Plus OxyClean. Did you ever work so hard you puked? Or passed out from the stress? Are you okay? Or wanted to scream in pain? <laughs> well, these three former Marines don't care. I just felt complete exhaustion. Their mission is to take ordinary citizens and make them heroes. Join us for Could You Survive? Get off your neck! Where Dr. Pam Peek challenges average Americans to pass life-threatening emergencies. But no one said... Are you dying? It would be easy. Could You Survive? Continues Thursday at 9 on Discovery Health. Why do Attention! Pet Egg is the number one foot care product in America today. Pet Egg gently removes calluses and dead skin to make your feet look and feel incredibly baby soft. You'll love it, and here's the deal. Through this special offer, the incredible Pet Egg is only $10. But wait, 
Call or go to pedic.com and you'll get a second pedic and a tube of our special foot repair cream. That's two pedics and a cream for only $10. It comes with our money back guarantee. Get baby soft feet today. Call or go to pedic.com and order your very own pedic. You don't have to take this, Wendy. Really? You're a Comcast digital cable customer, so you can stop your on-demand movie and finish it in another room. I didn't know that. Now you know. May I suggest a room downstairs? Any room on demand lets you start watching in one room, finish in another. Learn more at Comcast.com slash any room. Acting for the first time. Lynn Sanders has been enduring debilitating joint pains that her doctor has repeatedly insisted are a natural part of pregnancy. All my joint pain never subsided during the whole pregnancy, but I thought that was normal. After I delivered my son, I still had that achiness all over. But before her body has any time to really recuperate, she finds out she's pregnant yet again. And this time... The agonizing pain seemed to have escalated to a degree that she has never felt before. I thought because of hormonal problems that would just continue until, you know, your body gets back into normal shape again. But three months after her second boy's birth, Lynn still isn't feeling any better. The pain is constant. She begins to realize that she can't have any more children in this state and goes on the pill. And I think it was kind of a cranky mom at the time because of all the pain that I was having. There was always that question of why, why, is, why is all this happening? What's wrong with my mom? My knee pain was really, really a sharp, sharp pain at the time. I could hardly put weight on it. When Lynn checks in with her doctor yet again, he assures her that the crippling knee pain is simply a side effect of having paper-thin ligaments. The only thing that will help is another surgery. The next day, Lynn is wheeled into the OR. But as the surgeon inspects her knee, he realizes that the damage is far more extensive than they first thought. After completing the complicated surgery, he instructs the team to put her in a full leg cast to help stabilize her fragile knee. I was thinking, how am I going to take care of two young kids with a cast this size where I can't bend my knee? After eight days of recovery in the hospital, the surgeon discharges her with strict orders to take it easy. But Lynn is determined to get back on her feet as quickly as she can. And a few days later, she decides to give crutches a try. But as soon as she takes her first step, she notices that something isn't quite right. I was having a little bit of pain in my calf area, which was kind of unusual because he fixed my knee. The pain is just getting like worse. By the next morning, her calf is throbbing so badly that Dave insists on driving her to the emergency room. All it takes is one look at Lynn's leg, and the ER doctor knows that she's in serious trouble. I was very terrified. I didn't know what to expect. The medical team runs a battery of tests, and within an hour, they know exactly what's going on. Lynn has three blood clots in her leg. At any point, these clots could break loose and travel up through her blood vessels. If they lodge in a sensitive place like the lungs, it could kill her almost instantly. It was, uh, you know, a, a very dangerous uh, situation. They realized how quickly it could go bad. They thought they could be from my, my birth control pills, so they took me off immediately. Over the course of the next eight days, they keep a close eye on Lynn as they pump her full of blood thinners to help reduce the deadly clots. I just couldn't believe I had to go back for another eight days. When the team is confident that the young mother is no longer in danger, they release her with a 90-day supply of the blood thinning medication. Lynn and Dave are hopeful that the worst of it is behind them. But two months later, Lynn is caught off guard when her body starts to change again. I discover that I'm pregnant. You know, she's in a full leg cast, and somehow or another we managed to, you know, do what young couples do, and uh, we, uh, you know, she ended up getting pregnant. But the real shock is yet to come. On hearing the news, the doctor recommends that she terminate the pregnancy. 
He's concerned that the blood thinner she's been taking could have already done serious damage to the unborn fetus. Also, they said I could miscarry because of it. She was pretty broken up about it, and I, I was just trying to be the, you know, there to listen and, and try and understand what it was we were going to do next. Lynn immediately stops taking the blood thinners and begins researching her risks. When she contacts the March of Dimes, they refer her to Luann Week, a genetic counselor. We had some uncertainty about the exact timing of her pregnancy and how far along she was. We really have to pinpoint that timing because it makes a big difference as to what the risks are. The next day, Lynn goes in for an ultrasound and they're relieved to discover that she's only five weeks along. This is good news because the baby was only exposed to the blood thinners for a brief period of time. As we often say in genetics, nothing's 100%, and so we still had to manage and cope with the fact that there was some uncertainty here. But Lynn is willing to take the very real risks, especially when she finds out that she's having a girl. I just broke out in tears because I finally was going to have my girl. During this third pregnancy, she was in constant pain. I was in more pain than ever, and I was worried about the baby and if she would have birth defects. The stress of it all is almost more than either of them can bear. But in the 34th week of her pregnancy, the couple finally hits rock bottom. All of a sudden, I felt no movement. Here I'm thinking I'm going to have a stillborn or there's something wrong with my daughter. They had a love like no other until... There was no way I was going to leave her. This holiday season, see the story that will make you believe that love has no limits. Marathon Love, Sunday at 8 on Discovery Health. It's the holidays at PetSmart, so come one and all. There are hundreds of gifts for pets big and pets small. Toys only at PetSmart, so special and new. They'll love the gifts. You'll love the value. So give your sweet pet a gift to remember. Head to PetSmart today. Be better together. Do you know what causes most colds? <laughs> the rhinovirus. And it's just waiting to run you down. Used to be the only way to deal with your cold was to cover up the symptoms, but the cold was still there. Zycam is different. Taken at the first sign, Zycam is clinically proven to shorten a cold. So don't let a cold run you down. Get over it faster with Zycam. And also from Zycam Cold Remedy, try our newest great tasting rapid melt tablets. I love you. I love you more. No, I love you more. No, I love you more. I got you Sinuprat. Help your kids breathe freely with safe, natural, clinically proven Sinuprat for kids. Give it to someone you love. I went to Ancestry.com, but I thought, I'm not going to make it very far. I knew my parents and my grandparents, and then it happened. I got a leaf. When I clicked on it, I could actually see my grandfather's draft card from World War I and his U.S. Census from 1910, and another member's tree that had my great-grandparents and their parents and everything. And it all started with my first leaf. Discover your story today with a free trial at Ancestry.com. A doctor's biggest fear. I didn't know if we'd ever find a solution. Can become a patient's worst nightmare. I just thought, I don't want to live anymore. Witness true medical mysteries that defy the experts. Why can't they find out what's wrong? I don't think I've ever been so terrified in my life. And the pain was so severe that she wasn't just crying, she was screaming. I had reached my breaking point. An all-new mystery diagnosis. Next Monday at 10 on Discovery Health. Most of the people in Lynn Sanders' life think she's a klutz. They have no idea that the 28-year-old has persevered for more than a decade with chronic and debilitating joint pain. I had neighbors actually making fun of me, saying, well, what, what are you going to have a cast on this time? Then, during the eighth month of her third pregnancy, the baby stops moving, and the young mother knows she needs help. I immediately went to my OBGYN. He told me that I was in labor, basically, and that I was going to have the baby six weeks early. It's a tense six hours of labor, 
But on March 18, 1986, Jessica Sanders is born. And even though she's premature, doctors assure Dave and Lynn that she's perfectly healthy. But Lynn is still very worried that the blood thinners could have affected her baby girl in ways that aren't yet apparent. So she checks back in with Luann Week, her genetic counselor. I asked her lots of questions about Jessica's medical history, and every question that I asked um, had a very normal newborn baby answer. Just to be safe, Lynn continues to take her daughter in to see Luann every six months. And each time, she assures the nervous mother that all is well. At Jessica's three-year checkup, it becomes clear that the genetic counselor is far more worried about Lynn than her daughter. Luann asked me, every time I see you, you're in a cast, a different cast. So I started asking her a lot more questions about her health history. I felt it was important that I make her aware of a condition that might explain her problems. Lynn can't believe what Luann is suggesting. She spent nearly 15 years hearing that she's just different, but secretly she's always suspected there was more going on. I was totally desperate for some kind of answer to all the aches and pain that I had since I was 15 years old. Luann advises Lynn to get in touch with a genetic specialist immediately. She tracks down Dr. Pamela Trepain and hands over her extensive medical file. Dr. Trepain begins conducting her own investigation by having Lynn perform very specific tests on her joints. There is a scale that we use to be able to assess joint instability and joint hypermobility. In other words, how mobile are her joints? Looking at her skin, how stretchy it is. Based on that type of a physical exam, in addition to her medical history, makes that diagnosis. Lynn has classic features of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is a disorder in which a genetic mutation disrupts the patient's production of collagen a type of protein that acts as a glue and holds our skin, muscle, and ligaments together. Without the adequate collagen, Lynn's body quite literally began falling apart. Lynn's joint pain is a direct result of the poor collagen and the poor elasticity. Many children, their parents will describe them as being clumsy when in fact they're trying very hard to keep their whole body in appropriate alignment. You, you think back and think, well, maybe it wasn't, she wasn't the klutz that you know, we thought she was. It was related to this condition that she had no control over. Dr. Trepain speculates that Lynn's pain progressed slowly from her hands and wrists to other body parts because the joints that are used most often feel the wear and tear first. When Lynn was pregnant, she felt even more fatigued. We're already talking about joints that are unstable, and now you're adding the load of the pregnancy on top of that and a shifting center of gravity. All of those things then will combine to create increased joint pain. Historically, people who had classic Ehlers-Danlos syndrome had incredibly stretchy skin. Within circus environments, you see the people that can stretch their skin, taking their earlobes and pulling them down. You know, one of the big puzzles, of course, for Lynn was why it took so long for people to make this diagnosis. She did not have overly stretchy skin. Unfortunately, what most physicians have learned is that's EDS. While it's reassuring to finally know what she's been living with all these years, Lynn is not prepared for what the doctor has to say next. There is no cure for EDS. We cannot go in and fix the gene that is making the collagen incorrectly. We can, however, provide good pain control and good physical therapy. Lynn begins a rigorous course to strengthen and steady her joints and takes prescription medications to help manage her pain. Unfortunately, she will continue to require surgeries to tighten up her ligaments as they wear out. I'm trying to go and do the best I can each and every day. Every day is a new day. To date, Lynn has had more than 40 surgeries. She also wears custom-made silver ring splints to help stabilize the joints in her fingers. I wear these just to prevent tearing in my ligaments in my fingers, and also it really does help with pain. Lynn is still coming to terms with the fact that her disease will never go away. But she finds her inspiration to face each day through her husband's unwavering support. It takes a special person 
to marry somebody and still stand by my side. 33 years since we met. It's for better or worse than sickness and health. And, and that's pretty much what I stood by. Today, Dave and Lynn remain hopeful for a cure. In the meantime, she's doing all that she can to help patients like herself. In 2006, she started the Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome Network Cares. You have to be your own advocate. I hope someday every doctor knows something about